to new business and move right into a uh, discussion on a citizen's request for a monument in Delhi on Plaza. So, Colby, can you know a little bit more about that? Commissioners, at our last meeting we had a, a citizens come up about a, a um, monument to be placed uh, somewhere in, in the, the city. Uh, more specifically, we started narrowing those down to two different locations. So I wanted to bring this back up to you. Um, as, a, as an item on the agenda so that we could discuss it, uh, we could come forward with it. I do have so, uh, the, the city manager and the assistant city manager here that can help uh, with details and, and give a little bit more history behind this than maybe that I have for you. Um, uh, so I'll turn that over uh, right now. Uh, Sherman, do you have anything? Oh, Blanche wants to talk about it. Okay, go ahead, Blanche. All right. Okay. Go over to Blanche. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for having me back. I'm Blanche Delion, and I've come to give you a little bit more detail about a monument uh, to honor the founders of Victoria. Um, we have, uh, uh, this has been a long time vision uh, for the city of Victoria. It was a dream of my father's back in the 60s. Uh, they did have an attempt, however, it was a failed attempt to be successful in it back in the 60s. And I think that uh, we have all the right stuff now to make this happen. And um, I'd like to, um, uh, request your support um, for um, a um, proposal to go to City Council on a location. Over the pa past weekend, I visited two locations here in town for this proposed monument, um, and uh, I looked at um, the corner um, on Main Street in front of the Six Flag. Uh, monument that uh, exists now and I also looked at uh, the corner of Wan Lin and Main Street as a second location um, because uh, I don't know if you're aware but you're sitting on a very historic block uh, in the original history of uh, the village of Victoria before the Texas Revolution. Um, sitting there enjoying the space I'd I have uh, decided to propose that the spot be on Deleon Plaza be, uh, between um, the um, Six Flags and the monument for the Calle de los Diez Amigos. There is a uh, piece of landscape there that I think that we could raise a, a red granite block. Um, approximate uh, dimensions uh, 12 foot uh, by six foot on which to place two figures uh, greater than life-size figures one of Martin Deleon the founder of Victoria and his wife it was um, the couple that established um, this community in the very beginning so it was not necessarily just him but also her um, uh, he was six foot in stature, uh, so I am uh, anticipating a, uh, and it would be, you know, to scale in front of this, the Six Flags, which would provide a, a nice stage background for uh, this monument of these two figures on this raised granite bre uh, base. Uh, so I'm proposing that it be there. Uh, um, bronze, two figures. The couple um, telling or depicting um, what this community was about and, and also representing its founding. Since, uh, um, and I have used the model that the city of Seguin used uh, for uh, guiding the decisions that have been made uh, thus far. Um, Seguin recommended that, and they built one, it's an equestrian uh, monument to Juan Seguin, um, and it's in their downtown area on a, a square similar to what we have. Um, what they had recommended at the time is that you don't really get into the detail, conceptual, of what the monument looks like and actually bring your artists into bid on the image until you've raised maybe your first hundred thousand dollars which is what I'm proposing um, that we follow that same time timeline and theirs was very successful and I have since last meeting visited with several organizations some of which I'm a member and some of them I'm not um, and on board so far 
I have uh, the Daughters of the American Revolution, uh, the United Daughters of the Confederacy. I have Jeff Wright with uh, Victoria Preservation Inc. as well as the Historic Commission. And I also have a commitment and of support from um, the Genealogy Society here in town. Uh, Doris Obsta is the president there. Uh, I have worked with all of these organizations uh, and feel very confident that this will be very successful. Um, does anyone have any questions or? Um, oh, let me tell you a little bit about timeline too. Well, um, this is a project that when I'm planning, I like to be able to see a beginning, a middle, and an end too. And um, I'm uh, thinking in terms of it um, to uh, be successful, that we can use a uh, eight year timeline and have the monument completed and uh, ready for a reveal or a dedication uh, to coincide with the 100 year anniversary of our city, which would be, um, actually it's not, it would be 200 years, sorry, um, 2024. And we might could do a reveal at the year, at the beginning, because maybe this city is so proud and so Victoria proud that they would want to celebrate for an entire year and we might could open that year uh, with this dedication of this monument. So I'm talking about an eight year timeline. Um, uh, I have also since last meeting with you um, retained an attorney and I have uh, retained uh, Garland Sandhop to um, help me with the 5013C. We are naming as the core um, executives of that 5013C who is gonna actually do the fundraising. Uh, myself uh, as the lead, I've also um, have Barbara Kennedy uh, as the treasurer and also uh, Anna Harrison, Anna Deleon Harrison as the secretary to start that does not include the entire board. Uh, that was a place to start. Uh, those were the core uh, officers that we had for our 5013C. I anticipate that once that application goes, it'll. he told me it wasn't a fast thing, and I've come to learn that nothing is very fast, um, that it would probably take about three months to get that so that we could roll out um, the project to our community this fall. What did, you, what did you say? Uh, you talked about some figures, estimated costs? Um, the Juan Seguin Monument cost approximately $150,000. Now that's hard and soft because uh, the city of Seguin also got uh, things like their granite base donated. Um, uh, so, and that, that monument was built some time ago. So I'm anticipating maybe $200,000 for this. This is not a huge, that one was a big horse, a uh, guy wielding a sword on a horse um, and a huge granite block. Ours is not going to be that uh, imposing. It's gonna be smaller. So um, I would say a ballpark figure of about $200,000. So before we brought artists in for the bids and um, uh, the visuals about what this thing was gonna look like, we'd want half of it raised. They recommended uh, $100,000 before you brought in your artists for that. And I, I plan to do my best to raise that money. What kind of, what kind of, uh, what kind of input would the artist have on the scale of the monument itself? In other words, are, are, would, would, would you decide that it's, you know, six by 12 and, or, or would, would that be something that the artist would conceive once they saw the site and took a look at it or how would, how would that work? I would anticipate that the artist would have uh, a lot to do with that um, because they would be scaling it to the size of the area that we had. Y you, um, the artist would have the concept of it and also he, he is fitting an image, albeit a sculpture, in, in a spot so he wouldn't want it too big or too little and so his artist's uh, uh, depiction of that would 
would um, be scale appropriate. So it's kind of, it's like hiring an architect, only in this case it would be a sculptor. So, so this is on the, the corner right there um, in front of the, the flag, the flag poles? Um, exactly. Right, okay, I couldn't, Forest in, right, Forest in Maine. Yes, Forest in Maine. And, and what's remember. there, are there, are there benches there now or? What there is is they have the six flags and they have a, okay, okay. They have um, a visual of this, the spot here. Okay, good. <clears throat> but you have your six flags um, that are raised and there's a bench in front of the six flags that people use, you know, for every function that we've had. And what, what I'm anticipating is uh, that the sidewalk uh, leading up to that monument would be unaffected. Uh, what we would do is uh, drop this granite um, um, base where the um, landscape is to be in front of uh, that. There would be no destruction of, of any of the present or moving of any of the present structures. And we went back and looked um, at it, and um, I, I don't think it could take, uh, and I'm not even sure we're going to need a granite base that's 12 foot long. You might, you know, be more like 10 as opposed to 12, um, but you could fit it real easily in that, in that area. So these, uh, these uh, figures are raised up on this base and are in front of uh, this, this six flag in this beautiful red granite, um, and I'm not sure who uh, said that, but it's, uh, it's about founders and visions of founders, so it's, it's very appropriate that it would hang very well together. Um, and you have a lot of space to, uh, uh, to put those figures. What does the monument, uh, well, I've been by there a million times, but I can't remember. What's the monument in the foreground to? That's Calle de los Dias Amigos. Okay. <coughs> I need my glasses. <laughs> I, I understand. Okay, I have one question, just for everyone's clarity. You are only asking the city to provide you a place to do this. You're not looking for any funding from the city, correct? No, not right now. Not right now, okay. Not right now. I'm anticipating, and again, you know, these things, um, um, these things have evolved. Right now, I wasn't looking to the city to open up my fundraising with. Uh, I really wanted actually the family to step up first. And uh, um, while the family was stepping up first, then I was going to get with the organizations and do a formal community-wide um, fundraising uh, event. We have plenty of time, eight years is quite uh, some time to raise uh, some funds. But some of your decision making is made off of uh, the effort that you put forth. Um, this is a community that asks its citizens for quite a bit, you know, in terms of, you know, fundraising. Uh, there are a lot of projects. I know the dog park is near and dear to your heart, so you're going to be asking for funds. We are going to try to uh, not take the funds elsewhere. We're going to try to raise the funds ourselves. I personally think we can do it. Um, when we did our uh, Delion, uh, it ended up being called a reunion, but actually it was an Ali Ali in free. How many Delions can I get into, you know, to come back to Victoria? <laughs> and uh, we managed to do near nearly 400. Um, we um, had planned, uh, uh, we didn't plan, uh, but raised, you know, 10,000 easy with uh, an auction that we did, uh, and it was intended to pay for an unplanned event to bring the family together. So I, I think that it can be done. Uh, now there are things, uh, and you don't really want to uh, take from one, you know, uh, if you feel like you can do it yourself. I'm not going into this feeling like I could get the money to pay for this from this city. I'm going to uh, exhaust uh, every organization that is linked to um, history and genealogy and support of those things. 
uh, grant writers on one of the uh, skills that I've done. I've done grant writing for other things, and I have no problem in grant writing for this as well. Okay. And there are organizations that can be tapped for that that are not, that are outside the city. Very good. Thank you. So you're asking the Parks Commission to, to I guess, support your proposed location and bring actually, that forth to City Council? Exactly. I'm asking the Parks Commission to make the proposal to City Council uh, that this spot be designated for, um, for this monument. Mr. Chairman, just so we can discuss this, I, I'd, I'd offer a motion that we resolve to uh, recommend this location for the De Leon Monument to the City Council. Um, for discussion we can we can talk about that but but I'll, I'll put a motion on the floor awesome. to that effect motion has been put forth and seconded all in favor and that's simply a motion for further discussion I was just going to I'm just going to open the floor for discussion among ourselves I, I think um, I, I think that uh, it's certainly appropriate uh, as a kind of a founder's corner it seems like to me what was Mrs. De Leon's name Patricia De La Garza Um, okay. Well, with the motion made and seconded, I guess we have to vote on the motion before we can further any discussion, correct? No, we discussed no, discuss and then vote. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, my, my thought was that uh, it seems like our, our role, to the extent we have anything to, to say about it, would be to, to recommend to the um, city council that we don't, have a, we don't have a problem with that location, um, and I certainly don't. Uh, so I would be in favor of... of that type of a resolution I think it's an appropriate spot also um, it would just it, it would definitely not distract from anything else up there um, you know it would only add to just all of that the the panel about the founders and such I think it's the perfect location for it and it's I think it's time you know, we're nine years away from 200 years. We're, it's time to do something, I think. Yeah, I'm in agreement. I have no, no, I think it'll be an attractive addition to the, to the corner. And they, they seem to have a uh, generous time frame allowing themselves. So it's not a, a rushed right. item. So I'm, I'm, I'm for it. Is there, is that raised walkway there designed for any purpose or is it mostly for aesthetics? I mean, there is a purpose as far as behind it, but I think what she's talking about is in the is in the flower bed just in front of that raised walkway. Um, and so, I mean, we'd have to do some research as far as what's going to be there, but that's you know that's down the road quite a, quite a bit. I don't think it's out of the question. Well, no, it, it, so it, it, the plaza really, <laughs> the plaza is terraced up, and and the at the proposed side is at street or sidewalk level. It, it, and I think by the way that the the actual approval of what was going to be constructed there would not really be ours to, ma to make, I don't think. I mean, we're kind of suggesting that this would be an appropriate place. And I guess city council would probably put whatever um, requirements for approval of the final product once the artist does it and, does, and, and you know envisions it and decides the scale and everything else. I suppose council would make that ultimate call. Um, but I would certainly trust them to do that. Any, any further discussion? If not, I guess we'd call the question. So. I'd like to make a motion to uh, send a recommendation to City Council that we designate the portion of De Leon Plaza that fronts on Main and Forest in that lower area below the Six Flags Monument as a place for the Martin De Leon and Patricia De La Garza uh, De Leon Monument. I agree with that. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign? Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leon. Thank you very much. All right. Um, approval of minutes, seeing that there's no other citizens discussion or uh, no other items under new business. Uh, approval of minutes from the May meeting. 
I move the approval of the minutes from the last meeting. I second. First and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. Minutes from the May meeting are approved. Now moving on to citizens communication. At this time, seeing nobody move forward to the microphone, so I guess we can move on to items from commissioner, and that's number five on the agenda. And does anybody have any anything they want to bring forward to the to the commission? I want to report that the Dunlop uh, Fountain Works in De Leon Plaza, Colby. Thank you. It, it, Thank it you, is, sir. I just remember that you asked about that last time. I just want to let you know you were you were dead on. All right. <clears throat> Um, let's move on to the departmental reports and uh, the director's report. And Colby, I know you've got a budget presentation, so let's bring that forward. If I can work Danielle's fancy computer, I don't get one this nice. So, uh, just real quick, I'm going to go through this presentation, and I've got two kids swimming at a swim meet, and I'm playing Mr. Mom today, so I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to uh, exit and let Danielle finish out any other the other stuff that you have. But I want to make sure that, that um, you know, I, I stay as long as needed as any questions on this presentation that you may have. Uh, this is what I was I presented to council last Monday, I believe. Um, and so I want you to, to, you know, preempt you a little bit. This is a, a just a, a very... Uh, informal or not, not informal it's, it's a very brief presentation to council as far as what we're looking like council has not seen the entire uh, budget they will get that in August uh, and then we will have different work sessions to go through and pick through this so I want you to know this is what I presented but this does not mean that this will be the final uh, product that, that comes out of it, it could change uh, start off by going through our employees. This just goes through the uh, the parks mowing and maintenance side of the uh, we have 21 people Flood buyout, we have one. Uh, right away mowing, we have five. Recreation programming, two. Athletic fields, eight. Our community center, three. And then our administration, uh, three. And at any time during this, if y'all have any questions, feel free to stop me. Uh, this is one of the things that, that staff and I have been working on uh, real uh, hard this last year is to develop a, a set of maintenance standards for the for the park system. Uh, what we did is is we developed this to determine our strengths and weaknesses of our facilities and not just by the eye test of driving by or, or oh yeah we need to do this to a park at this point and so it's really giving us a tool in developing needs for future budgets and so when we start building the budgets going through we'll start referring back to this document and how we're how we're going through the park system our target goal is an 85 percent as you can see through some of those some of those are met some of those are not um, we do this on a quarterly basis, whether that's uh, rec our recreation staff does it sometimes, our parks uh, managers or our crew leaders will do it at, at certain points. We may have different staff that will go out and perform these uh, maintenance standards. Um, uh, just a little quick quiz deal and yes or no, or is it meeting this standard or not? And, and so I want you guys to, to this is a, a relatively new uh, process that y'all probably haven't seen before but this is the what we'll be working on when we start building our future budgets of where we're where we have needs and where we don't Colby how are these standards defined we have for each park we go through and, and we have each park has its own folder basically it's its own questions depending on the amenities that are there and so you may go through and and, and if it has a playground, it has the same questions for the playground. Okay, are these, you know, are the are the bolts in good? Are there any rust? Uh, you know, uh, for if there's fence lines, you know, is the fence uh, well stretched and intact? So things to that nature. Are our trash cans rusted? You know, any of those things. So each one of them we've gone through, and each park we've identified. You know, Riverside is a is a is a lot bigger of a packet than than what you know some of the smaller parks would be, and so we've developed uh, a set of questions for each park. Does that make sense? So a park like Greenbelt, which doesn't have a lot of improvements, would be looked at differently than someone that had like a playground. Or yes, whatever. we're just judging what, what infrastructure is there. Make sense? Mm -hmm. 
went over with it just a general uh, of what we do. Uh, park mowing, we've got 631 acres, uh, or 632 acres basically. Uh, we spend 546 and a half man hours per cycle. Uh, that's one mowing. Uh, that takes us 20 to 22 cycles per year. Uh, miscellaneous non-parkland mowing, that would be like our uh, library, uh, different uh, city buildings that we, we will take care of. And I'm not going to read through each one of those as far as how many acres or man hours at all, unless you have a question. The one that struck me when I first moved here was the right-of-way mowing. You know, 521 acres, uh, that's a lot of mowing. And uh, that's the loop, uh, things to that nature that we, that we take care of. How many does it take to do that, Kobe? Uh, five people. Five just to do the right-of-way? Yes, sir. Because it took, it just takes one to do the flood buyout. Is that right? Uh, one, and normally with that one, we have uh, a, a labor ready. Now, I don't. Uh, I, I, we have a certain area to maintain. I don't. I don't micromanage my 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 superintendent as far as he moves those pieces around depending on where the need is or how much that he's needed. Normally, you have one to two people going out on the flood buyouts. Uh, you know, it just depends on what, you know, how caught up he is. Like right now, <coughs> we need more help for him because, it, you know, you've got a lot of rain. Last year, when it was Ju July, he was able to handle it by himself. And so it just, it really depends, Mr. Wilden. So for, just for citizens, so they know. So if we've got a park, or is, is a park maintained any more frequently than the right-of-way mowing? Uh, the right-of-way mowing, uh, yes, because of the <coughs> amount of time that it takes and, and you, you, you know, you can only put a certain piece of equipment on that on there. Uh, the tractors are, are going to be on it, where you're going to have a different piece of equipment that's going to be taking care of a park. Um, that was one of the big changes getting here. That uh, I think if you've seen Riverside, and I, I'll say not this past week or week and a half or so, but if you've seen Riverside, the way that the grass is starting to grow, it's it's starting to thicken up, uh, and and we're not having to, we're we're not mowing that with the same mower that we're doing out at rideaways, and so we're able to get to that quicker uh, in a quicker t time period. That makes so, sense. Yeah. So the the the, the park's going to appear prettier. Uh, it's going to uh, the grass is going to be better than obviously the right of way. Yes, sir. And and now that takes in, in account low. Like, you know, over by the mall and and on uh, Navarro and and Main Street, that section of uh, of the loop, we are mowing with more of a finishing mower. Uh, and if you, lo you go out there and look at it, you can see the difference in that grass compared to what's going up, up the side of the slopes. Uh, that's where tech stop mows. We don't have a tractor can get up there, but that's, you know, we're mowing it more often with a better type of mower, and so it's, it's thickening up as well and not growing out, out as high, except for this week. <laughs> uh, flood buyouts, we've got 76 lots. It equals uh, just over 20 acres. Um, it's taking us, uh, you know, we're doing 20 two to 26 mowings per year on those. The herbicide program, uh, 74 and a half uh, miles that we take care of. And we do that program every nine weeks on a continuous basis. This is one that we've also started uh, this, this year. We've, we've started to look at our recreation programs to see what is the cost per participant so that we can gauge of, of what programs that we are doing and, and how effective they are as far as the cost that we're putting into them compared to the participation level that we're receiving. So I'll let you go through the, some of those. If you see like the softball, flag football, kickball, uh, those, are, those are programs that are shocking when you see that number that's out there uh, that, that we're going to have to look at this past year when we made um, – uh, fee structure changes, we did, uh, council granted me the ability to set the cost of these programs to the participant based on what my cost was going to be. And so that way I can start working on those programs and start bringing that cost, that, that, that cost per participant at more at an acceptable level. And is flag football so high because the participant level is low? Yeah, it's a brand new program. This is the, just the second season that we've ran it, and so the participation level is not quite there. You know, once those those numbers get out, it's the same cost uh, basically as softball for me, except I don't have as many teams, and so it, it it doesn't spread that cost out over the amount of people that softball does. And so we'll be taking a look at that, whether that's changing the way that we officiate it. Um, you know, and if that program doesn't, you know, uh, we can't get it to come back in, then that may be a, a program that we look at to decide do we need to be doing this or not. What is an acceptable cost level? 
have you determined that? You know, that, that depends on each community. It, it really is developing on, on what we feel is a, is, a, is a service to the community. You know, I mean, I, I would love to get those programs to, to start cutting them down. I would love to be on break even, uh, you know, eventually. But I think that if we, can, if we can get those numbers in half this next year, then we're starting to see we're moving forward. You know, if we can't, then, then we really need to take a look at the program and, and, and determine something, a different course of action. Do those costs per participant include your staff? Yes, it does. Hours as well? Yes, it, it does. Okay. That's any cost that goes into the program that we have. Some of those are more amenable to getting the cost paid directly by the participants. Than yes, others. sir. You've got, you've got the ones like the, the kayak clinic, softball, flag football, kickball. You know, those are programs that are, are uh, they're not free to the community to come do. And so those are programs that the community, the people that are participating in it pay for that. And so we really need to take a look at, okay, let's make sure that we're, we're spreading that out right, that, that we're not limiting what we're doing that is free to the public, like our movies in the park, because we're, we're still paying too much on different programs that are a cost per participant. Make sense? Where does the flag football take place? At the, uh, youth, or at the adult complex, softball complex in the outfield. That's adult uh, flag football. That's not youth flag football. This is a budget comparison from 2015 to 2016. Uh, 16, of course, being proposed. Uh, our personnel cost is going up $38,000. What we've presented in this is a 3% is uh, raise to our employees. Plus, we've developed a STEP program. Uh, right now, we, we, will have what we, we will have in this next year a... Uh, if passed, by all means, and let me, if I don't say that enough, that if the council chooses to go this route, uh, we will have a maintenance level one, level two, and level three position. And as our employees are gaining skills and gaining abilities, then they will be able to uh, move from a level one to a two to a three. And, and so that was not something that was uh, available for them in the last three years or so, or last few years, excuse me. And, and, and so we really felt like that was important, um, you know, uh, those guys make me look good. It's not me going out and mowing. You know, it, it, they're the ones that make me make us look good, make the department look good, and make the city look good. And, and they're doing a bang up job. And we need to make sure that we're rewarding for that, and that we're we're getting them uh, skills that they can use, and they see an advancement opportunity within our department, so that we can make keep them as we gain their skills. We want those guys to be 15, 20 year employees for us. Our operating cost is going down by $172,000. Uh, that really attributes to uh, just some one-time purchases that we're not doing. Uh, and, and so those numbers each year will, will be different, you know, depending on, uh, you know, 50000 of that was for the uh, architectural fees for when we were going to do the Riverside Pavilion at the uh, uh, convention center. And so that's, you'll see a little fluctuation in there. Uh, the big one is uh, the capital. Uh, that is directly to, uh, we're proposing a new building for parks and recreation for um, um, the administration offices and a yard for, for, the, for the employees. We've outgrown it. We've stretched it way past its seams. Um, and that's a building that's over 50 years old. And so we're really excited that we're, we're you know, this close to getting a new building. We're not, not too far away from it. And where would that be? Uh, we haven't said the exact spot, but what we're looking at right now is as you come into the park on McWright, over on the right-hand side, just past uh, that first parking lot that goes back into it, uh, where the, there's two practice fields out there, uh, that's where we're looking at right now. Bluff Street? Sir? Bluff Street? No, McWright. McWright. Oh. Yeah, as you come into the park on McWright, it'd be directly across from the Challenger Athletes, okay. uh, that San, area. San Laban and Elder Fields used to be. Yeah, where the old, yeah, the old Little League fields were. Yeah. Right, right. It's and not in a floodway, it's not a floodplain, and that, that's a good spot for us. And then the existing facility would be? We would, we haven't determined exactly what we would do with that, so, uh, you know, there's some ideas popping around, but, but we, I don't have an exact plan for that just yet. But that's out of the floodplain, is that right? Or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And your workable square footage would go from what to what? Right now, workable square foot, I probably have about 500. Uh, that sounds crazy, but I've got one entrance, and it's, you know it's it's really uh, blocked. If you guys want to come see that that facility, uh, I don't know the exact range. We're looking at uh, square footage of what we could do on working to be in between that four thousand, right around in there, square footage of what you know shop space that we could work in, uh, plus offices and stuff. So we're looking at the building being you know nine to to 
12,000 square feet. I don't know exactly yet uh, until I get the architecture start going on it. Uh, once this gets, a, you know, if this gets approved in October, uh, then we will start working on that, pro that project, and I'll keep you updated on there. I've got 1.5 million to spend, so I've got to keep it within that. So, what how much? Ideas? How much would it take up? Is it you have so many acres that you want for the yard and the in the building? We've got a rough plan, uh, and Mr. Weird, I don't want to. I don't mean to to sound too much. I I don't know exactly yet. Like I said, I've I've got a budget that I've got to work in, so I'm gonna try to squeeze as much as I can out of there. But in the same token, I want to plan it in a sense that it, I don't have to redo this building in 10 years. And I'm putting up portable buildings. Uh, the city manager already said she'd shoot me. So <laughs> it was close. Who is that? <laughs> Uh, here's some of the major projects that we are proposing. I, I do want to uh, give you a little side note, the asterisk. Uh, some of these projects, you may have seen this in the paper, some of these projects may change depending on our flood damage. Uh, we're still assessing what happened, uh, still accessing some of our infrastructure right now. And so I wanted to put this out to council that if some of these projects are not able to be done uh, or some of the infrastructure repairs are not able to be redone in this year's budget, we may have to change some of these projects to help take care of what we already have uh, before we build something new. Uh, I know I'm going to have to do some work on the Grover's Bend parking lot and stuff. I think we can do that internally, you know, within, within the budget that we have. But I just wanted to put that out there that just in case that, you know, we, exceeds what we're able to do in this year's budget we may have to push it into next year's and some of these projects may change but what we're proposing is the Grover's Bend playground at hundred thousand dollars the pool demo a, a nine-hole disc golf course uh, call a nine-hole disc golf at Fox's Bend a uh, replacement of the sidewalks at the duck pond a, the children's park playground the partnership with the challenge athlete I know that was brought to this to this committee uh, talked about the parks building at 1.5 million, and then remodeling both <coughs> restrooms um, at at Riverside. And so we would take all the infrastructure out of those restrooms and replace them. Just it would go down to cinder block. We'd go through there and sandblast that and clean it up. And, and so it'd basically be a new building except for the cinder block walls. These were all the par all the restrooms in Riverside. Yes, sir. Okay. So w w it w we I know we talked about Grover's Bend. And so we're not going to move anything in. We're just going to redo with what we've got. Is that right? That's the plan right now. I, I, taking a look at that facility, you, you know, it, it needs the, the, the internal guts taken out and redone. The cinder block's fine. You know, the cinder block walls are fine, the, the, uh, and I, I think we'll be okay. You know, the size of the restroom is perfect. You know, there's, so it's just a matter of going in there and re, redoing this. Colby, I have a question for you about uh -huh. the disc golf I know course. what you're about to say. So, uh, yeah. Tell me the good news. <laughs> well, the, 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 the if the uh, the addition of a few holes to make it needs to be done, that project uh, is real easy to do internally. If I've got to add a couple holes to make the course better for the for the golfers, uh, that's not going to be a problem with my budget as far as that that project is is you know if you look at that that's about 1.2. I'm doing that math in my head. 100 or uh, $1,200 per hole. I, I can get the rest of those in in the budget if I need to. So. It would be nice to put 15 holes there opposed to nine. We really need 18 holes in Fox's, in Fox's band and, and so like that said, we can pull in larger tournaments. Sure. And, and all these projects, uh, just so that you're aware, th these are, I'm estimating these projects and the cost of these projects, you know, a long way in advance before I even get to start on them. So I'm giving it the, the best number that I can. All these you know, you're going to have some that come in under budget, some that come in over budget, and we'll make adjustments as we get going. When we start October and we decide, okay, this is the project that we're going after, we'll start figuring, okay, what is our actual hard cost going to be and get that firmed back up. And so we'll be able to take a look at it at that point. Uh, it's just a matter of getting it through this budget right now is the big part. Nine holes really won't behoove us. We really need that 18 in Fox's Run, Ben, Fox's Ben. Okay. Question. Uh, community center budget, uh, we're staying pretty level in the personnel and the operations. Uh, the, the large jump in the capital is, is we're going to finish out that remodel. Uh, if you've come and looked, the, the annex is, has been remodeled, but the kitchen didn't. And so we're going to redo the kitchen. We're going to redo the, the um, arena, the lobby, the bathrooms, and then the, um, uh, the dome is what we're proposing. And this goes through those projects that are that are left in the community center. We do have a block um, 
uh, in early 16 <coughs> or mid 2016 uh, if this project is approved that th we think that we can we can get going on it and be done by the first part of August but that would completely uh, complete the community center total remodel does that lobby area include that kind of makeshift kitchen or is that going to go away or that area where they sometimes sell drinks out of in the lobby? The stand. concession stand? Yeah, does that include that? It will include some uh, floor working in it. Uh, the the, the roll-up doors and the, the, the material up front are perfectly fine. We did, add, we did add a kegerator to that facility, and so it's really just some minor stuff in the flooring uh, and, the, uh, you know, looking at the walls. And that is the end of that presentation. Unless you all have any questions for me. Um, like I said, this is this you know uh, this is a proposed budget. It could change. It could go. Uh, you know, I, I don't see that it will. But but just so that you know that this is proposed, and until council has their second vote on it, uh, late September, you know, it, there still could be some movement of that of those projects or those numbers up or, or probably not up, but more likely down. I know that you are on a time crunch here, and I'm not going to, okay. I, I don't want right. to take up more of your time, but, and I realize it's very early still too. Do you, was there a lot of damage in Riverside? Uh, is there going to have to be a lot of repair? I know at one point the the rumor was that McCrite Drive was torn up from the flood, but I no, see where it's open again, so. Yeah, there's there's not, and it was really exciting. That I don't think there, there's some back in, in Grover's Bend, back in the very back that we just opened back up uh, to the old road that was there. Now that was that's coming up from the actual um, uh, parking lot up was uh, was okay. And so I think part of that's going to be we're just going to rip it out because it was going to be covered up anyway. And I haven't been able to get back into Fox's Bend. Um, I'm sure it's it's back down. I'm sure my superintendent's back there. I was on, off today watching kids, and so I haven't been able to get back through there. But I really don't see any major, major damage uh, that I'm concerned about. Uh, the stuff on McWright, uh, the street department's working. I think we're just going to have to redo some base. Uh, we, ha we have that kind of one way where people can't get over into it. Uh, but back in Fox's Bend, I don't think that we've got anything uh, last time that I was through there you know there was still some standing water which has gone down by now but I haven't been able to get back there yet but I don't uh, Miss Kinson I don't I don't think there is but I don't well, want to sounds say that good then yeah because yeah. yeah. there was a lot of water all yes, the pictures I saw the aerial <laughs> pictures there was a lot but of luckily water. we didn't get into the stadium we didn't get into some of that stuff that mm -hmm. could have really shot those numbers up high yeah. uh, you know if it would have took out a road then then we'd have been in trouble thank you did we lose those parking areas in, the, in Grover's Bend? The fence stayed. Uh, a lot of the uh, the granite gravel just got moved, uh, and and that's why we built it that way. You know, for the it held the first flood. The second one got most of it, and, and it's pushed over. So we're gonna have to do some leveling in in there. You know, I, I don't have an exact number. We're we're still turning that stuff back into FEMA as far as uh, what what we may get in reimbursed. But but for you know a limited amount, we'll be able to fix that real quick. Uh, that's not going to be something that's going to take long. My guys can do that. Uh, we we built it so it won't it won't take us long to refinish it out. Uh, right. You know, it's just it's really cleaning out the. You know, if you go down in there to Grover's Bend, there's a. a it, it looks like somebody just chopped down 80 trees and just dropped them right there. You know, I mean, I just uh, uh, the uh, log jam came up to it and just dropped it right there. So it's going to be us cleaning that kind of stuff up before we can open it back up. More than it is infrastructure, uh, is what we're looking at right now. Did uh, how high did it make it into the uh, Horseman's Club arena? No. No. It got it 30, 30 foot eight, I believe. Um, it was close. It was close. There was some some spots on the warning track at at um, the stadium that it got into. Um, just if you if you're familiar with the stadium, the the women's restroom that's off as you walk into the left right there it got a little bit into that but it was just minor you know nothing nothing you know three foot or anything just a couple inches into it um and, and so you know it really gave us the 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 ability to see what the river's changed since the 98 flood what's going to be different than what you know what we had listed or changed and so our department went through and 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 I, and I know the emergency management did as well but we went through and really documented okay this is the level and this is what it's doing and so that we're able to prepare for that next time uh, as well so on the horse club arena not even in any of the grounds i wasn't really referring to the buildings yeah. but the grounds were uh, above uh 
parts of it got it just minor but nothing that was would have caused major major damage uh you know it, it got some poles and stuff but nothing i mean all of our our control posts remained you know i think there's one or two that got pulled out so there was nothing that you know a playground wouldn't have been able to handle you know or something of that nature or a, an apparatus that was built right would have been able to handle that the water that was in there was just raised and it, did, it wasn't moving it just it got there and kind of stayed and then, then went back down it never was was moving like it was in Grover's Bend. Uh, that's where the big damage is going to be. Is when that water's moving, then it just kind of comes and stands there. Colby, I hate to ask you one more time, just to be clear, on the Fox's Bend disc golf course, your true intent is to really put 18 holes out there, right? 15 I, it, more new ones, it, reallocating the it, three alternates. It did. It, it's going to I've depend on. I've been working on, with you this on a long time. Yeah, you it, told it, me it'd be no problem. It, I don't foresee it being a a, a problem, uh, Ms. Repka. I think that what we what we have is is we have a dollar figure that I'm trying to reach overall in a park system. And, and if you go back to to the slide that was on our um, uh, our, our park standards, there is. I'm developing this budget in a in a way of trying to handle all these different needs, plus with what the 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 Riverside um, uh, master plan was, the projects that that you guys ranked in there, and so I'm trying to pull those projects out and take care of the rest of those parks. I don't foresee it being an issue, but I've got to make sure that that my budget is able to handle that. Now, if you're if you're talking adding three or four more holes back onto that plus the the twelve not a big deal if you're talking i got to add another twelve thousand to that possibly a big deal we you know 15 more holes i've got you i got you. create I can 18. <laughs> sure. Sure. he's got a finite number dollar amount he's working with because i have to put a budget together that takes care of every department in the city so he's doing a good job trying to answer answer you gail but he, he's got a very finite number he's working with so I, you know I think you need to take it for that and say okay we'll try to get it done and that's probably he's not gonna be able to stand up here and say absolutely it's getting done he, he's dancing with you a little bit but I'll tell you <laughs> try is the best word he can use but with a little bit of money so because I think the parks budget you know trying to get that building built it, you know it's a large dollar amount and then trying to do some other projects I'm, I'm pleased with what we're able to put forth the council for the parks department this year quite frankly so okay so I've already told him if he needs extra funding I would step up to start a committee and start raising funds for those extra holes we'll accept a check anytime <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not mistaken has that been done in the past like private sponsorships like the for the cost of the materials or less for the for each hole and stuff like that so. and that's where that's where if we can get the project up there and I'm not trying to I, I am dancing on the question and, and not telling you I don't want to come out and just say Gail no <laughs> I, I believe that the possibility is there but I don't want to come out and tell you yes and disappoint in, in that sense there's a way just like this dog park there's a way we've got the base funding now now when we start working on that project come October we can take a look at it and say, okay, here's what we can do. If we want to go up on that project, I can look and say, okay, my budget can handle it or no, it can't. Now what do we need to do to get that additional? So I'm not saying that, nope, all we're going to build is 12 and it's never, it, or 9 and it's never else going to happen. I'm saying that's what I've got money for uh, at this point. And start. then we'll see at that point. Right. So just start. That's right. right. Any other questions? When will this budget get approved and how fast can you start spending the money <laughs> moving on a project? The budget will be approved and come effective October 1. Uh, at, at that point, we will start looking at, at staff as far as time-wise. We, we will look at, at what projects uh, we are going to do internally, uh, my department may handle, what projects we're going to contract out. Um, and and go go forward with those and the same token i do want to you know let you know that that we will will try to do one project at a time and get that project in so that we don't go over and not get all projects going at one time and then wait we don't have enough money and that's that's why we will systematically price those projects in a, in an order and get started on uh, you know as we as we can does that make sense Any other questions for me? Could you do nine holes this year and nine holes next year, and then <laughs> and that, would have that, an idea a, of when it would be done? Yeah, I mean, that's just, it's something, as we start building these budgets, as I present these budgets to Charmel and, and John, 
uh, you know, we go through and I, I do that, and then they, they come and look and see what money we've got as an overall, you know, department. I, I can tell you that, that uh, I'm very excited about this budget. You know, my budget is increasing by roughly $2 million uh, this year uh, to help build that building. Uh, and, and that's exciting. That's exciting as a director to be able to do. That's exciting as as a community being able to put such an emphasis in the parks and recreation. Um, I'm excited the way that we're able to put projects together without, you know, having to, to go out for bonds or go to those things. We're, we're, we're able to do a lot of things this year in this budget that, that pre, you know, that, that are exciting for us to, to manage, uh, that I think is exciting for the community to see, and, and we're seeing a difference in what, in the, the pr final project too. Riverside or to different parks, we're able to see infrastructure being uh, put into these these parks, and and that's going to be if you know it's going to be something that's going to affect generations down the line. Did you have any new expenditures that that changed when we were originally talking about the fifteen? Just Miss Repka, I I designed a, a budget, and then then I, it goes through three different processes to get there. Uh, I, I'm not trying to, uh, uh, that's just the process that we go through. Okay. Any other questions? I have to ask. It. Okay. I've got people asking me, so I, understand. I have to ask. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Colby. Thank Thanks, Colby. Thank Thanks, Colby. <clears throat> All right. We'll move on to uh, committee reports and actions and a dog park update and there's been a lot of a lot of movement on this committee and I know Danielle's been working hard, so we appreciate that. Well, Y'all been working hard too. We appreciate that. Well, um, as far as the dog park goes, um, I know we have selected a logo. And Jamie has it. He has the logo. You'll pass that around and look at it. This is the one that we have selected and work it this direction. And um, we're still finalizing the details on the dog walk. Right, we have um, the for July 25th. Yeah. Right. This is a, uh, a flyer that we have uh, set up for the dog walk on uh, July 25th, and uh, it's it, we need to get together, Gail and uh, Laura and Ash and myself. We need to maybe make some minor, very minor informational changes here, but it's going to look basically like this. We've got a lot of groups on board already. Uh, you've seen at the bottom here that uh, are anxious to participate in this event, and uh, I think it's going to be uh, going to be a good deal. We're going to be able to use the uh, parks website mm -hmm. to link to uh, for more information. So, uh, if you all want to take a look at this, uh, feel free. We'll just slide it down. It's not most of the information is right. Uh, there are some minor changes we might make as far as concerning start times, this and that and the other, but uh, this is. Uh, does this one reflect the corrections that we made last week? No. Okay. No. It does not. Not yet. Not yet. <clears throat> okay. The corrections we made last week? Right. I think we had per person and we were. Yeah, it's it says like per person, should be per dog. Per dog. I made notes on this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. A couple yeah. of logos and sponsors that need to be added. Yeah, yeah those, like yeah. That. Yeah. We have the. The Duncan Civic Tory Dog Convenience Club is kind of doing the entertainment yeah. for the right. event. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll make sure they're on there. Build for the yeah. yeah, and uh, so uh, anyhow, uh, that's coming along real well. I want to thank Laura and Ash Gale for their assistance. It's been great. Uh, what else? Uh, um, the only thing that I have on my end as far as the street dance goes um, for the fundraising and running the beer booth, um, we have two more slots left open for volunteers for the 8.30 um, slot, time slot on that day. So if you know of anybody, um, or if yourself is willing to volunteer that evening, if you aren't already, um, just contact me and I can put you on that list. But the early afternoon shift is covered. We just need two more people in the 8.30 slot. Is that for selling tickets or beer? One for tickets, one for beer. What's the time frame, 8.30 to? 8.30 to 10.30. 10 yeah. 8.30 to 10.30 yeah. is this. Yeah. But we need to be there by we need to what time was the first shift six yes for setup and our our uh our uh illustrious mayor is joining us i understand yes he has volunteered uh along <laughs> he'll be doing the eight thirty shift and then along with uh, sarah hanshell will also be 
volunteering the 8:30 shift too. Perfect. So, who did, who did you say, Jamie? The mayor. The mayor. Oh, Paul. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pulasic. You'll be joining us also. So, uh, I'm hoping to have some. Uh, well, if we can get together and if briefly after this meeting or together Wednesday, make some final changes on that. We can get a good have a bunch of those on hand, and uh, perhaps a uh, a banner with perhaps just uh, something like this on it would be uh, could be produced quickly and had at the uh, street dance also. So, who are we doing printing on these flyers? Well, right now, um, thanks to Outburst Advertising, they've been helping design um, the logo and the flyer. Um, so we haven't discussed printing it yet, but we might look to them maybe um, if they're willing. If not, I'm sure we'll search other avenues maybe in house. I had Lamar listed as a sponsor. Are they given a billboard? Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, Nikki uh, with Lamar came by my office today. I missed her, mm -hmm. but we've already discussed this and we've already got the ice broke on that. So uh, I'm sure that's what she's coming by looking for some type of logo or artwork. So uh, we're going to be getting some uh, electronic time on the bill, electronic billboards from Lamar. They've been very, uh, and, you know, very generous and, and uh, enthusiastic about helping us with this. Is that the one on Main Street and Knockingbird? Their office or the sign? No, the sign. Oh, I'm not sure exactly which signs it will be. But, but their office is right in that vicinity also. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's going to be, I think it's going to work out well. We'll have to hammer out the details. But I'm sure that's why uh, she stopped by my office, but I missed her today. Uh, let's see. I think we should ask your radio station to do a live remote at the time for this uh, Bark in the Park. <laughs> Just to try to get more people out. Do they do live remotes anymore? They do. Okay, they I didn't do. know if they'd gotten so uh, mm -hmm. electronic mm -hmm. that uh, they weren't doing those anymore. Okay, well that's yeah, yeah t TV also. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, Ash and I discussed uh, catching uh, going on the uh, cross crossroads, crossroads today. Yeah. Or was that what it's called, crossroads today? Uh, community, community crossroads. crossroads. Community crossroads. I'm sorry, I would always get that mixed up. And uh, so Ash has several dogs. So maybe we can have a enthusiastic for rent on that. I'm, I'm down one. I actually rehomed one that was that I found about a week ago. So, but like I said, on our event, we're we're anticipating having, uh, uh, gosh, countless events uh, along with the dog walk. Uh, where did, where'd the flyer go? Oh, well, anyhow, uh, uh, dog microchipping, uh, all sorts of uh, dog pet agility services. demo, um, dog obedience. Kissing contest. <laughs> Ash is going to be in a booth. I don't know yeah. how that one's working yet. Yeah, the dog uh, kissing contest. I don't know. I think maybe we we'll change that to kissing booth or something no, like no. that. The kissing contest. Kissing contest. Okay. Did y'all get the premise of that? Yeah. In, yeah. Can you can you explain it? Just the way it was explained to me. A dog kissing contest consists of like participants getting up on the stage. Whoever wants to participate. Um, and then it's a timed event. So say like for a minute. Whichever dog owner can get the most dog kisses on their face would be the winner of the kissing contest. So That's how it was explained to me. Yeah, how many times you get smacked, I guess, huh? So, well, uh, the uh, that, that. <laughs> and the dog and the dunking for weenies contest would consist of uh, cutting up hot dog weenies and putting them in like a bag, a counted out amount of weenies for all the dogs. So then you've got buckets, depending on what size of dogs you're running, small buckets medium-sized buckets and then uh, again all the dogs get up on the stage and the buckets in front of them and then you dump the weenies in and then let the dogs add them and for a timed event again whoever eats the most weenies is the dog weenie winner <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, so that's a you know and now we, we have also, a lot of participants we can run different heats <laughs> <laughs> have finals semifinals and semi uh, you've also Gail's worked uh, wonderfully with getting us uh, um, uh, the dog agility group to coming to put on a demonstration and the obedience uh, dog obedience uh, demonstration so uh, we have to credit that to Pauline Lossman uh, with the dog obedience Victoria dog obedience club she's the one that uh, said that she would do the dog obedience demo and the agility demo and actually she recommended the game she said that they play those at the dog events that they go to so I didn't create those just to let you know well that's still that's still good <laughs> experience uh, we're gonna have a selfie station mini pet grooming goodie bags for each participant uh, if we need a backdrop for the selfies, uh, Cheryl said, just let her know. Great. And uh, so 
uh, we've got we've we've uh, we've had a lot of generous support from businesses in the community. So we're looking forward to a, a good event. Also, the the fire marshal's department, the fire oh. department, uh, is going to bring out Sparky the dog, and I talked to them the other day too, at another event. They're going to have a little educational booth. They're looking at bringing out a fire truck, and uh, they've got some breathing masks for animals that they were going to demo, and uh, I also asked them to do a doggy CPR demo. Got to know how That's to give cool. your dog CPR. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it sounds like more like you might get more kisses out of that. Then. <laughs> How do you get a dog to be still for CPR? That's well, they to need CPR. That. You would be out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Depends how you hold the hot dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, the, so uh, we're looking forward to this deal coming together um, real quick. Uh, like I said, it's, it doesn't seem you know, it was just like the other the other day. Saying, "Wow, it's another month till the street dance." Well, wow, street dance is here already next mm -hmm. week. So this will be uh, coming up on us quick. So. Uh, Lisa, thanks for everybody's support and help, and uh, we got the street dance coming up. That'll be a great deal for us. Uh, mm -hmm. So bring your uh, cash I'll box and <laughs> I was ID say checker this. and whatever else we need, and we'll go I'm to sorry. town Thursday. Go ahead. I was just going to say, since Danielle's got the master list for the workers mm -hmm. for the street dance, do you mind sending out an email? I and, can. Uh, if, for those that you don't have addresses on. I know one of my people that I recruited, I, I'll forward it on to her. It's not a problem. So, okay. That would be helpful. I don't think we the person to bring the, the till and a money box. Do we, does the parks have a money box? And we do have a money box. Mm -hmm. We do. Um, there was one other thing I was going to add um, as far as street dance goes. Um, I know we have scheduled times and things for volunteers, but like I mentioned before, you know, if anything happens, just let me know. If somebody wants to volunteer, just give me a call at the office at 485-3200 to volunteer for that booth. So, oh, and one more thing. <laughs> I haven't gotten the renderings back yet from the architect, but he is still working on those and we will bring those to y'all whenever we get them in for the any, dog park. Any okay. remote time frame? I don't know. I do not have that. Hopefully soon. Good. Okay. Great. Anything else in the dog park? Uh, committee members, we were we would like to get together again Wednesday, three uh, four o'clock, parks office. Uh, I'll be out of town. Well, did, weren't you the one that set the date of the tenth? I don't think so. I'm going to get my grandson out of town and bring him back to Victoria. So no, I don't think I set the date. Did I get the date right when you and you and you and Ash and I met? Did I get that date correct? I don't remember. I don't remember us even setting a date at the last meeting. We're going meeting. to talk about capital. We can talk about it after this meeting. If there's no other dog park. Oh, we can have an argue about greater, it. Greater, right greater dog park. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, perhaps we might make a change there. But anyhow, I've, that's all I have for now. I think the flyer will be finalized with the changes. I'm um, probably after the meeting, if there is going to be one on Wednesday, because um, I well, believe that's what we were meeting on Wednesday to discuss. Yeah, or we can get together flyer. here in the next, or immediately afterwards after and discuss this. it. Yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't take long. No. It shouldn't, shouldn't take long at all. They're mostly there. Okay. Um, I did have one, one event coming up this Friday. We're having a movie in the park at Deleon Plaza, and we're showing The Incredibles at 8:30. So please come out free. At De Leon. At De Leon. Okay. Mm-hmm. What's that? Right? Eight thirty p.m. Eight thirty. Mm -hmm. De Leon Plaza. Free. Nice. That's all I have. Great. Thanks, Danielle. Good. Anybody have anything else for the good of the order? Just one quick thing. Is it possible? Can we get a uh, copy of the of Colby's budget presentation? Yes. Email. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Well, if nothing else, we can adjourn the meeting. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Works for me. Can the dog parkers meet now? Yeah. We can.